This is the Zendek, a mini PC based handheld gaming console that I've been working on all year. Today we're going to be upgrading the controller boards, taking a first look at the power management and finally testing out a couple more games on the Zendek. So let's get started. Since the last update video I got stuck straight into fixing the issues I found with the first revision of the controller PCBs. I'm pretty confident that I've got all of the issues sorted from last time so let's take a look at the new design. I've fixed the pin order on the joystick PCB so there's no need to drill out the contacts and hand wire things. I've also removed the signal filtering capacitors that I was originally going to fit to these PCBs as the Hall Effect joysticks seem to provide a nice clean signal without them. Next up is the right controller PCB. I didn't have to change much on this one but I did discover that the joysticks can handle a 5 volt input so I swapped a couple of contacts on the top PCB connector so now the joystick and trigger are making full use of the available resolution of the analog inputs. This time I had both of the front controller PCBs made using an immersion gold finish instead of the default hot air solder levelling as it provides a flatter more reliable surface for the carbon contacts on the bottom membranes. This is simply an option that PCBWay offers that you can pick when you upload your board to have it manufactured. It's not necessary on all of the PCBs, just the front two as they rely on carbon contacts for the buttons. Speaking of PCBWay, this month they are celebrating their 10th anniversary with exclusive coupons and exciting activities. PCBWay have been a sponsor of my channel for over a year now and they have really helped to make this latest project a reality. PCBWay offers top-notch PCB prototyping, assembly and fabrication services. Don't miss out on the amazing deals and fun events this month. Visit PCBWay today and be part of the celebration. Last but not least, here's the left controller PCB. This one required the most changes with the addition of the 3.3 volt regulator that I forgot last time, along with extra connectors for the USB hub ports so I can connect the touchscreen and power management internally. This one also got the same ENIG treatment as the right controller PCB, along with swapping the joystick connector pins to provide 5 volts to the joystick so that both sides are the same. With that out of the way, it's time to fit up the new controller boards and give them another test. I even remembered to order speakers this time. The speaker connector on the display is a 4-pin 1.25mm JST PH, which isn't quite the same as the Pico Blade connectors I've used elsewhere, but they're roughly the same size and the pin spacing is the same, so I've managed to solder some wires to the speakers and shove a Pico Blade connector in there without too much hassle. I had already fitted the speakers off camera and they are a tight fit in this housing, so just imagine this is B-roll of me fitting them, since I don't want to risk damaging them by pulling them back out. There's also a little 3D printed back cover that's supposed to get glued in place but I may want to try and retrieve these speakers when the time comes to move the parts to the final housing so I won't glue mine in for now. Now I can connect the touch input internally. I've just bought a cheap USB-C cable and cut the end off and put a Pico Blade connector in its place instead so it can be connected up to one of the spare ports of the USB hub. Next, let's take a look at the power management. This time around I've taken a similar approach to the NUC deck but I've condensed all of the power management parts onto one PCB so I don't have to redesign this system every time I want to build a new handheld. It also makes this a useful product I could possibly sell if there's enough interest. It's not quite finished yet but here's a rough list of the final features this will have when it's complete. It supports two charger inputs. One is through the edge mounted USB-C connector that will accept up to a 20 volt USB PD charger and the second is this set of plated holes on the side of the PCB which will accept anywhere from 3.6 to 24 volt input. The board then safely manages a 4S lithium battery for charge and discharge and will seamlessly switch between AC power and battery power. The onboard fuel gauge is connected to a microprocessor so it can report to the operating system as a UPS over a USB connection and provide battery percentage, time to empty and full, and many other useful battery statistics. The processor also handles powering the device on and off using the built-in edge mounted power button which enables the final stage of the power management system, a 19 volt boost converter which provides a stable power source to your mini PC. And all of this in a package that's less than half the size of a credit card. I chose not to include cell balancing since an external cell balancing PCB can be had for as little as a couple of dollars from China. So there was no point in increasing the complexity and cost of the design by including one. If this sounds like something you're interested in, please let me know in the comments and I'll look into having a batch of these boards produced. Finally, let's do a quick bit of testing. There's no noticeable performance difference between the controller PCB versions. So everything seems to be working nicely without any of the dodgy fixes I needed last time. I want to test some emulation this time around, so I'm going to start off with PS2, 
since PCSX2 2.0 was just released a few days ago. One game that I've always had trouble with is the original Ratchet & Clank. The later ones have always run fine, but this one really struggles in a couple of spots. In past versions of PCSX2 that I've tried, looking over the Metropolis City would cause a slowdown on even a recent, moderately specced gaming PC but there's absolutely no trouble here. I have accidentally got the mapping for X and Y reversed in the controller, meaning I keep reaching for the wrong button for melee attacks. But other than that, the game is now perfectly playable. Moving on, I've had plenty of people ask how Switch runs. So let's take a look at Super Mario Odyssey. Nintendo has been clamping down on Switch emulation recently, so before I begin, I'd like to point out to any of Nintendo's lawyers that probably aren't watching anyway, that I own a physical copy of this game and a Switch to play it on, so I should be legally in the clear here. In the past, I've used Yuzu, but since it got shut down recently, I decided to give Ryu Jinx a go, and it seems to be running really well. There's a few occasional hitches, but the emulator could still be building the shader case for this game, so it may get less noticeable as I get further into the game. It's managing a steady 60 FPS otherwise, and it looks terrific on this nice big 8 inch display. I was going to test another game, but I just managed to get the configurator software working in time for the video, so I'll show you how that's progressing instead. My main aim here was just to ensure that I have a functional way to control the RGB so that I can pass the information on to the handheld companion team and see if they can get the system integrated for me. In the meantime, I've written my own configurator program that allows you to select the animation style, speed and brightness as well as the primary and secondary colours for the animation. Hitting the save settings button writes the values to the controller's inbuilt memory, so once you've got a configuration you are happy with, it will stay that way permanently until you next open the software and change it. I want to eventually include some settings in here for the trackpad too, but I'll leave that for another video. That's it for this one. If you're enjoying the series, please drop a like and consider subscribing. I also have a Discord that you can join if you want somewhere to ask questions or share your own projects. And if you really want to help support the channel, I have a buy me a coffee so that you can help me purchase the parts I need for these projects or games that you'd like me to test. All of the links are in the video description. See you next time.